I'm ready to magnify the Lord. Are you? Amen. That's to enlarge upon him. Amen. We enlarge him. Amen. Then our, our troubles, our problems, our situations, they, they become smaller. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm thankful tonight. I'm thankful tonight. Let's just lift our hands. Let's just love him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you tonight. I love you tonight, Lord. I, I don't know, Lord, what's in store tonight, Lord. But, God, we, we place this service in your hands tonight, Lord. God, this is your service, Lord. Your presence are here tonight, Lord. God, filling our hearts and our lives, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord. I'm thankful, God, that we can feel, Lord, that we can feel you here tonight, Lord. God, have your way tonight, Lord. We open our hearts, Lord. We open our minds unto you, Lord, tonight, Jesus. God, let your will be done, Lord. Let your will be done here tonight, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 That's all right. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I praise you tonight. I praise you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead, Felicia, if you're ready, amen, to lead us in some songs tonight. We just want the Lord's will to be done here tonight. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Who knows? We might, we might go to midnight. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> My wife said, Woo!
still. That's right. Amen. And, and, and just continually to praise Him. Right. And watch those walls fall. Hallelujah. Amen. I, uh, when I was younger, things bothered me a whole lot more. I guess they do now. Uh, but uh, just seemed like, you know, something would come up. And, and uh, I just, you know, I didn't know what to, what to do about it, you know. But trust in God and learning to be patient. Amen. With his workings. That's right. Amen. With his doings. Amen. Help me to realize there are some things that I can't do nothing about. Right? Only he can take care of them. Hallelujah. So we just have to put it in the hands of God and say, Lord, there it is. Amen. Amen. You take care of it. Hallelujah. You fix it. Hallelujah. However, however you want to do it. Amen. We will just rejoice in his blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. He is. Amen. Sister Nancy, come on. If you feel like it tonight, you feel like singing, I, I don't know. That's fine. Whatever, whatever you feel. Amen. Tonight. Hallelujah. Lord bless Sister Nancy. Did we miss them here Thursday night? Amen. But I know I know they was enjoying their little Amen. Mini vacation. Hallelujah. listen to others that want to tell us, you know, things that and to keep us down, but we can't do, let that happen. We've got to hold on to God and the promises of what he has given us and the things that he has made a way for us. He's made a way. Yes. So many times when there seems to be no way. That's right. I, I, I can list things and a whole page of things of that the way God had worked and he had moved over the many years that we've lived for God now. And um, the things that he's done and how that he made a way and I mean, you just think there's not any way and God would uh, make a way. Yeah, and one time it. even um, uh, we had uh, of course we lived in Savannah and I was driving every day to Jack's Creek to teach school. And uh, um and it was expensive, and I didn't get anything for teaching. And occasionally, uh, one of the parents, by the time I got to school, I had a, a long van full of kids. I've had 16, 17 kids, and, and not even more sometimes, I don't know, but I know I had that many. And uh, that, at one time, Ken even set up there, you remember it used to be have the motors sitting in the middle of the yeah. seats? Yeah, and he sat there. Of course, he didn't have a seat belt, but back then, I don't think anybody no. offered. No. <laughs> <laughs> had the <to> seat belt. <laughs> and, uh, um, but anyway, we had uh, had the insurance coming up on the car, on the van, and uh, when I'd go to school and go home, of course, it taking me an hour to get to back home, and. Uh, and then cook some supper and and about get off at six o'clock and I have to get back to church by seven thirty, drive an hour. And it you know, and it was um well it was a few minutes late getting to Brother Babe Bruce whenever he was over there at Reagan. And um uh, uh, we went in and and uh, I saw remember Brother Jake listen, Sister Bruce's brother. Yeah. He uh, he got up before in just a little bit, and then he said, "Boy, I was afraid I was missing it tonight. That God had told me to take an offering up for Sister Nancy. Said 
um, God said that there's a need um, that they they have, and and they took up an offering other than for the evangelist, and it was for me and uh, we. You know what it was? Enough to pay the insurance and ties. God, it, that's just one of the times. Oh yes. And I can. I could go on yes. and on for a long time yes. telling instances. Yes. And, and I think sometimes maybe we should yes. because we need to be reminded. Remind me, Lord, or oh, remind me, dear Lord. We need to remember how that thing is going. The Spirit of God was moving one time in the... It just came to me, so I'm going to tell it too. Um, we had... Come back to Jack's Creek. To, um, they were in the old building, the old church building. Remember that when they, the state was way up tall and all in. But anyway, uh, the Lord was, was moving, just moving. And I don't remember who it was. Came a hold and got a hold of my hand. I took one step and the power of God just was all over us. We don't take that one step hardly anymore. You know? We feel the Spirit of God and an unction to do something a little bit sometimes, yeah. and but we don't take that one step to see the power of God fall upon us. I remember one time it was a different time because we were sitting in, on the in the back. We come in late and um, a few minutes late, and uh, so we sat in the back back there, and it was full. People used to come by. And you got the power of God moving. They, they just stopped. I mean, people who didn't know, didn't have no. Yeah, well, we just felt to stop. And they did. Um, and the, the place would just be crowded, and you couldn't hardly find a place to sit. Well, anyway, we did find, I think we had to sit separate that night, all of us, the kids. But um, it was just like it's the, the, the Holy Ghost started at the stage and just, just swept and just sweeping the, the whole building, you know. And whenever it got to you, the power of God was right there and you you were just oh, yeah. wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes. And it was you know, there's just so many things that we can tell about God. But our mind has got to be on God. Our praise has got to be on God. Um, I was reading something this week, you know, I was talking about bringing our uh, I think that was in Jeremiah and bringing our sacrifices of praise to the house of God. That's what we are here for, is to offer up our praise unto God. And if we are, uh, if think we can do even a little more of a lifting up our hands and praising Him, bringing these sacrifices of praise in into Him, and, and, and let it, you know, I, I can see uh, the Brother Darren preached the message of the night, you know, and that was wonderful, but we can, and I can look back and see what I am today and how I do today and how I did 35, 40, 50 years ago. Am I the same? No, I'm not the same. Do I take that first step out? No, I don't take it out. We, I need, Nancy needs to be able to do what needs to be done to fulfill my soul. He gave us the Holy Ghost that we can be full. It's, and uh, I was reading in First John two this this afternoon a little bit. Took me an hour two, but anyway, I was reading some this afternoon. And uh, and what was I saying? But we we uh, be fulfilled. We can be we can be filled and full. And we, we don't have to worry about the sin that he was talking about because that we have given our heart to God and that was a great message today. Thank you. And um, Thank you. God is there to help us and that's for his good pleasure to do Thank what you. needs to be done. But I'm glad today that God is moving yes. and I can see him moving and I can see the 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 results of things, God is trying to get us back to those places where that we are seeing more movement and seeing more people 
come in and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Just keep praying, y'all. Yeah. Just keep believing. Yeah. Just don't let anything change our mind because it's not always. Sometimes it's it's those that uh, of our own house, uh, uh, our families, you know, our extended families that wants to. Uh, well, you're not able to do that, or you know, you know, just anything they can do. That's what the devil wants is to keep us down to get we get to believing that we can't do what we can. But we can all do something, and if it's just nothing but raising our hand, saying those prayers, keep them up, y'all. We're not we're we're not losing. We're gaining in God. Yes. Um, had it not been, and I don't know what I sang it. I used to sing it over there, over yonder, and Sherry does it. Try D. I don't know if it's still or Try to stop
God. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, sometimes there may be one individual in the service that holds the key to that service. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, sometimes God nudges us and uh, that that could be <coughs> if we'd be obedient to step out, that could that could be what uh, turns turns that service loose. Hallelujah. Lord help me to be sensitive. I pray, Lord help me be sensitive, amen, to the to the moving of your spirit and of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I, I sure don't want to be the one that would put a damper, amen, on, on the on the working of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Brother Don, do you do you sing the old rugged cross? Do you, I thought you sung that not too long ago. Do you feel like singing that tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. If you feel like it, it, it just it, while she was singing that song and the old rugged cross was uh, was in that course, it, it, I, and I thought you did. Hallelujah, Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. I'm thankful for what he what he done. Amen. We 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 he's 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 still he's not on the cross, but I'm thankful for for the work at the cross. Amen. That was done. Amen. That blood that he come that he come that supreme sacrifice. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If we could be cleansed from all sin once and for all. Well, I'll shut up. Oh, I don't think that was indeed, but I am. Sure. Thank you, Lord. Bless my brother. Thank you, Lord. On the hills far away, stood an old man.
Sister Lenore, she she'd get her up and get her ready, and they go to church, Amen. But uh, of course, now she's she's to a place that uh, she she's pretty well. She she's just bed fast, and uh, oh, uh, uh, but that's that's good. That's good, Amen. That we're we're able to, Sister Mary Lou, as long as we're able. And, and I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you, Amen. I, I since I've got a little older, uh, a lot of times I. Or when I was younger, I, I didn't have much pity on folks. I mean, you know, I come, you ain't standing up worshiping the Lord, you know. <laughs> but now that I've got older, I understand. But you know what? Hey, man, it's not. Uh, you know, we we can sit there on 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 our pew. There's people that's come in in wheelchairs, and they worship the Lord with all their heart. Hey, Amen. You know what? If it comes from the heart, it don't matter. Amen. It don't matter if we're standing, if we're sitting. Amen. If we're in a wheelchair, if we're coming, in, if we, they roll us in on a bed. Amen. If we're, uh, I, I know I've made mention of this, and I can't, Sister Felicia may know who I'm talking about, Brother Kevin may know who I'm talking about, but there was a, a young man that got uh, stricken, I believe it was, was, was with cancer, and as this cancer began to uh, wear on him, he become weak, and uh, but he, uh, he he wanted his desire was to go to the house of God, and they they rolled him in, and uh, all he could do he didn't have strength to raise his hands, but he took a little uh, had a little old, one of those little red laser lights, and, and he he sat there and just back and forth on on the on the ceiling that light just he he was that's his only way he could praise God, but he was going he's going to do what he could you know. Amen. You know what? Amen. That's that ought to be our desire. We ought to love God that much that no matter, Amen, that we can give Him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Vic, justify tonight. It's good to be back in town. Friends, family, and brothers and sisters. And yes. Amen. I just got here this morning when he said something about the, the name of Jesus. Come to church, and his car took off front of and doesn't come ahead on him, and all I can do is say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And somehow another, we all are still on our tires, and nobody got sent, nobody got nothing, and that's all it was. That's right. You get hands, all of you get hands, and I just thank you for it. Yes. And every day, any day, it's just like this man's talking about this, your home, man. 
Friday night. That old trailer was more than a joke needed, but we made it back. Yes. Praise in Jesus. Yes. Praise in His name. That's I right. I know what y'all are doing. I know. Yes. Was, Thank you, Lord. I was fighting. I was sweating. <laughs> yeah. I was actually breaking out and sweat, but I know. I know who had control. Of yes. Place. trailer that got fish tail. Yeah. Everybody needs to experience that one time. <laughs> one time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our, our son had, had come out there to uh, uh, Bucks out there and he got some cross ties on a little uh, five by eight trailer. And uh, he, uh, uh, I, I thought he knew better than to go very fast, especially if, when that trailer is is the weight on, on, the, on the tail end of that trailer. And anyway, coming out of Parsons, he got up to speed. Next thing you know, that thing flipped him. He rolled about three or four times and uh, told his truck out, and I, I don't know what all. And he said, Daddy, he said, every time I get a trailer on behind my truck, he said, he said I just draw up in knots. <laughs> but you know what? It, it's, it's the Lord, he's with us, Brother Big. He's with us. Hallelujah. Lord, yeah. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Sister Guffey, you want to testify tonight? Well, I will, but what I was thinking was kind of funny, but maybe it That's all right. Amen. I was thinking about Abigail and Amanda here, and I got the Holy Ghost when I was 11. But I had this problem. When I go to church, I could speak in tongues. I could get close to God and speak in tongues. But when I'd go home, when I'd pray, I'd feel God, but I wouldn't speak in tongues. And we'd been married quite a while. The kids were small, and he had to go to work. I put a load of clothes in the washer and I said, Devil, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm staying on these knees. I don't care if it takes all day until I speak in tongues. Uh -huh. This has got to stop. I got down and prayed for quite a while. I could feel the Lord, but I wasn't speaking in tongues. And something got right here and said, If you get carried away, your washer's going to run over. <laughs> and I said, I said, Devil, I don't care if the washer runs over. I'm still staying here. And I stayed there, and I got me a good blessing and spoke in tongues. And when I got up, the washers ran over. But anyhow, it was worth it. So you can feel God at home. And, yeah. and I've never had a problem praying through to that point since. Yeah. And I know there's times that we have to just put the devil in his place. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. We got the devil on the run now. We got the devil on the run. He can't stay if we pray. Seeing what the Lord has done, come on, Brother Kevin. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. <coughs> you used to sing that. Did somebody sing that here other night? My dad sang it. That's right. Yeah, I, I thought so. Hallelujah. Like, Thank you. like Sherman and the devil were talking on him. But <laughs> all those good things. Hallelujah. I do too. I like running him and stomping him and <laughs> kicking him and tail and everything I can do to him. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Of course, if we if we're gonna spend our time in the flesh, like we was talking about this morning, we ain't got much power over it. That's right, brother Kevin. That's right. We, we got to stay in the right spirit. That was really encouraging. I appreciate you telling that, sister. That's something that I, I wish I'd have had more people talk about whenever I was younger. I didn't. I had the exact same problem. I could I could get in the spirit when I was at church. And I would pray. We we had prayer every single night, didn't we? Yeah. We had prayer every night at home or as a family. And Jeremy slept sometimes. <laughs> and I, I slept I slept sometimes. But but you know, sometimes you wake up and there's a ladder towards heaven. You, you never really know. You, you might be sleeping on an altar. That might be a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> At least it's better than better than some of the alternatives. But but you can touch God when you need him. And really, more than anything, I really feel like what the what the real problem is, at least it had been for me, was that it's a it's like a frame of mind that you get in. That Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I preaching your message? <laughs> well, I'm not leaving long, man. <laughs> 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 
but I really did. I felt I felt like it was it was a it was definitely a frame of mind that I got in, like like an urgency or a desperation that you get whenever you're trying to seek to get to a certain place in the spirit. That's it's not spiritual. It's not a spiritual mindset. If you know what I mean. It's it's whenever you, you get in that begging spirit that you can't really touch God in because he doesn't like begging. He doesn't like griping and grumbling. He doesn't like fussing and complaining. So if you're trying to get in the spirit of God, you have to do it through praise and glorifying him and worshiping him. And mag like you're saying this morning, magnify him. If you want to get in the presence of God, you've got to enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Thank you, Jesus. And if you enter with any other mindset, it's a turnoff to him. He doesn't like it. And then the devil jumps on your shoulder like you were saying and tries to get you distracted by things that you could be thinking and other things that get on your mind. And then you just can't ever get to the place that you need to get to. But there's a song I used to, I used, we used to hear a lot. Forget about yourself, Mac, and what's it, how's it going? Forget about ourselves, magnify the Lord, and worship Him. And when you get in that mindset, you don't have all of those contradictive thoughts and processes. But anyway, I had a song I was going to try to play. At least I'm going to try to. I haven't done it in a while, but. Take you up all evening. Yeah, that's good, Brother Kim. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now that I got over here, I might just continue talking. <laughs> now, Sister Nancy, you said something here one night that really helped us out, too. It really helped me out. That whenever you get to the place that you are about to speak in tongues, you can feel it coming on you. But if you don't open up your mouth and let it come out, then it won't. It, it's kind of a... You can feel it all over you. and it, 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 it It's all over you. You can tell it's the Holy Ghost, but if you don't open your mouth and let it come out, then nothing happens. I mean, it feels good, but that joy, it just just isn't as, as explosive if it don't come out of your inner soul. Hallelujah. It's just kind of like a shell that's being washed and and it's not on the inside. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if any of that's helping anybody. Though. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Bless Brother Kim. Bless the Lord tonight, Jesus. Jesus, you
in the blame, Mark. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Amen. I was thinking, as Brother Kevin was testifying and telling about the, their family prayer, I, uh, uh, the wife and I and Regina, we was uh, down praying one night, and we, we prayed, and, and I, I guess I got a little long-winded that night. But anyway, I... Uh, they had got it, kind of got quiet, but anyway, uh, I guess, I guess I, I got up on Jacob's ladder or something. I don't know, but anyway, I said, I said, we was praying. I said, I said, Lord, help my daddy. He's been dead. My my daddy's been dead for a few years. Wow. <laughs> and Brenda, Brenda said, Come on, Regina, let's get up and go to bed. <laughs> We laugh about it. I, 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 I guess I had been off in La La World or something. I don't know, but anyway, anyway, I said we we've laughed about it ever since. You know, it, it's sometimes things happen, and, and uh, it, it's it's funny. You know, when you, when you look back on it, you laugh about it, and uh, you, you know, I wonder sometimes if if you know. Humor, you know, it, it, it's good. The laughter is good. You know, it's like a medicine. It's good for your, your soul. So <laughs> we look back on this every patiently. We laugh about it. But, uh, oh, uh, these things happen. We fall asleep sometimes. Not the brother Jerry. Amen. <laughs> Sister Felicia, do you have anything tonight? Or? I got a song. All right. Amen. Let's worship with Sister Felicia. She sings tonight. <laughs>
But I'm going to tell you what happens a lot of times. We pick them back up and take them back with us. Yeah. Hallelujah. But amen. I believe, amen, that's that's like casting whenever uh, I, you fishermen, if you, if you ever used a cast net, yeah. uh, when, you, when you get that thing ready and you cast it, it leaves your hand. And, and that's that's when it, in the Bible when it says cast your cares. Amen. Give it all to Him. Let <laughs> let it go. Hallelujah. Amen. And 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 and, and yeah. He'll take care. He'll answer. Amen. Amen. Sister Amanda, would you just praise the Lord, or you want to testify? Whatever. He's just praising. Oh, okay. That's that's fine, sis. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I just didn't want, if you had something, I didn't want I didn't want to miss you, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. How many's ready to hear Brother Jeremy tonight? Yeah. Amen. I, I, hallelujah. Amen. No, I think we're all behind you, brother. Yeah, we are. Amen. Lord bless Brother Jeremy. Say, brother. Whatever, whatever you feel on your heart tonight, just come and obey the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Lord bless Brother Jeremy. Yeah. Hallelujah. In Jesus. Rugged cross made the difference. I've seen it in one of them, but thank you, Jesus. Is it one fifty four? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I don't know what key this is in, and I don't know <laughs> anything about it, but thank God for what he did for us. Hmm, how many glasses are in? I'm going to flatten it more than that, probably. <laughs> Twas no. Twas a life filled with aimless desperation.
Sister Nancy was talking about all around what I was going to talk about. Okay, I jumped on it a little bit. But our, our, uh, I'm going to talk about courage. That's something that the Holy Ghost gives us, and without it, we can't face many things in life. Because right. the devil is going to try to discourage us instead of encourage us. Uh-huh. And the Holy Ghost is going to encourage us. But courage is the ability to do something that frightens one. The quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc. without fear, bravery. And I thought about the three Hebrew children, Daniel and the three Hebrew children, and they, they, they showed this courage in the face of all that was going on. Right. We know the story in Daniel. It starts out, the children of Israel was taken captive, the children of Judah was taken captive by King Nebuchadnezzar, and he was trying to train them in his ways and to serve his gods and do all this other stuff. But there was a there was a certain little group of, of boys that just just had something down in them that was drilled into them from the mama and the, the daddy that was taught into them from a young age and yeah. they wouldn't let go of it for nothing. And even when they tried to set them aside and feed them certain things and make them drink certain things. Daniel said, I'm not going to defile myself with all that stuff. He stood up and he, he set his foot down. He said, I'm not going to do it. That's right. And and but he wasn't he wasn't arrogant about it or dumb about it. He he uh, he had he had God with him that gave him that wisdom to know how to deal with that situation. Right. Not just to say, well I ain't going to do it. What you going to do about it? <laughs> no, he he tried. He he got them to try the spirit. Uh-huh. He said. He said, just try it. Just try it and see if if, if God don't work. So he got he got the guy willing to try it. And he said after ten days they was fairer than the rest of the children of Israel. He said y'all just keep doing what y'all are doing. And I've seen it many times when when God's watching out for His people and they just they just kind of overlook what's supposed to be done because God's taking care of y'all. We ain't right. got no worries. We're, we're not going to get in trouble for letting y'all keep doing what y'all want to do. Come on. But uh, these four <laughs> children, they, uh, they got with Daniel and the king had some dreams and uh, he didn't know what was going on. He tried to get all his wise men and all the ones that was able to tell him supposedly what was going to happen or what was supposed to be the meaning of his dream and they couldn't tell him so he was ready to just kill them all including Daniel and the rest of them because they was part of his his uh, yeah the wise men I had another word I was looking for the wise men just as good but one thing Daniel and the three boys the three did they went home and they fasted and prayed to God. And that was the key note. They fasted and prayed all night. And God gave Daniel the interpretation of that dream. Well, we know what happened when, the, when King Nebuchadnezzar found out the meaning of that dream. He, uh, he went a little overboard with, I guess, pride and whatever else you want to do. and built a big image of himself and, and uh, tried to make everybody bow down to it. But there was these three boys that they weren't going to do it. And uh, in Daniel chapter 3, let's see where did it go. I was going to start 3. What did it say? Okay, verse 16, 3 and verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. And it infuriated Nebuchadnezzar. Because he had never had nobody just blatantly refuse to do what he commanded them to do before him. And, and if they did, then they was gone. Yeah. But he was just so mad, and he said, turn up the furnace seven times harder. And, uh, but but he, he did he did give them a chance. He said, well, maybe they didn't, maybe they didn't hear me the first time, you know? He said, uh, he said uh, give them another chance here. Because he really liked them, because they, they're, they're the whole reason all this came about. They, they're the ones that told him the meaning of this dream, and Daniel and those three boys, they was the ones that, they had a connection with something that he didn't have a connection with, so he was, I, I think he was kind of, in a way, careful to do something at first to them, but then after they just said, no, we will not worship thy image nor serve thee, and oh, he just got mad and just said, well, we'll see about that, and threw him in the furnace, and then he got to sit back around and, uh, enjoying what happened and uh, he got to looking over there in the furnace to see how long it was going to take him to burn up so that way he could go ahead and turn the furnace back down pro and uh, no he said uh, he said hey hey boys didn't we throw three men over here in this furnace he said am I seeing this right dude I see four walking around down there unbound and unharmed had somebody else look over in there yeah he called them out. So when he called them out, there's only three that came out. So, had to be thinking he was going crazy by this time. But that spirit of God that gives us that boldness. And he's going to take care of us no matter what situation that we get in. If we're doing what God wants us to do. Now if we go off and get ourselves in a situation that God uh, didn't give us the authority to get ourselves into we're probably going to suffer the consequences of our own actions but uh, it brings me to uh, in Matthew chapter 4 and Jesus was led up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil after, after John had baptized him and and uh, the uh, <clears throat> the dove ascended on him. I was trying to think of the not really the comparison, but the uh, the meaning of the dove. The Holy Ghost was ascended on him like a dove, and he went up into the wilderness. And the first thing that he did, he fasted forty days and forty nights. And afterwards he was hungry. But that's a key that I noticed in all this, both of these stories. They fasted and prayed. And afterwards there was there was there was probably hungry. But Jesus wasn't hungry after he fasted and prayed 40 days. And then all of a sudden the tempter came in. And this little setting of scripture right here is very, very interesting to me. Because the devil had absolutely no clue who he was talking to. He said, And when he would when the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God. Now the devil knows that a son of God has power. So he wanted to try to test this son of God to see how much power that he had. Command these stones to be made bread. Because the devil knows quite a bit. He, he knew too much and he got him in trouble, I think. He didn't understand it all, but he understood a lot more than we do sometimes. He found out and he got he got jealous is what he done. He got jealous and thought he didn't, he didn't know the whole story. He didn't know the rest of the story. He just knew that there was going to be something great and he wanted to be a part of it, but he wanted to be in control of all of it instead of be a, a lesser a lesser vessel. 
we were created to be a lesser vessel, to be a, a help to God. That that I was going to say something about the in the in the message Sunday night, but we are the high calling of God in Christ. We are looking. That is the highest calling that that is to be called for. The high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He wants us to be a part of Himself, making decisions, running to. It says in Revelations, I think it says in Revelations, but to reign with him. Not to reign over him or to reign, but he wants somebody to reign with him. And he has that set up, but the devil didn't want to be with him. He wanted to reign over him, and he thought that he could exalt his throne over God. Yes. Instead of, and, and I think, I mean, yes, just sometimes it really don't make no sense. It, to me, because I don't, I don't know it all. I ain't going to claim I know it all. But God just kind of slowly showed me things here and there. And it's just like, wow. Like, why would you not want to just be a part of something so great? He's, he's got something so great for us. He's given us that spirit that gives us that boldness, that courage. He gathered his ten disciples on down. It says, I think it's in... Uh, Chapter 10, I think it is. It said, and when he had called his disciples, getting ahead of myself, but the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, after the devil tempted him, so much that was going on right here, he tempted him trying to get him to command these stones to be made bread. And you think of just that, that in itself, commanding stones to be made bread. If that, would, if that was possible, it is possible. God could command stones to be made bread, and a son of God could command stones to be made bread. But in the right way, in the right, man, in, in the right setting, if it was a necessity at the moment, he could command something and, and it be changed create water out of a rock right. out of nowhere he can, he can do whatever he wants to do but it says and then the devil taking him up into, into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him if thou be the son of God cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bury thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now that right th knowing that right there would give you a little bit of courage. You know, like, hey, I can go and do this and I ain't got to worry about it. If you're really good on what God wanted you to do, if you did dash it, the saying is true. If you dashed your foot against the stone, it's, he's giving his angels charge over there to, to, to catch you and, and pick you up. But the yep. devil's trying to twist it. He's trying to, yep, right. trying to rest the scripture. Yep, yeah. and Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And he keeps going on. And I just think it's so so interesting. He takes him up into an exceeding high mountain and showing them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Like he didn't already know the glory of them. He just kind of spoke them out there, you know. And he said, hey, this, put all yeah. this out here, but... He said, and saith unto them, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, came and and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And that's something that he was weary because he was hungry. And anytime you battle with the devil, it's tiring in your flesh. It's weary. It makes you weary in your flesh. But when but when the Holy Ghost comes and ministers to you, you can feel yourself being boosted in the natural. You can feel your body getting that refreshing that it needs from it. And he and he will give us that what we need, but if we haven't been 
where we need to be. If we haven't been fasting and praying and the devil comes and does all this to you, we ain't going to be able to tell him, get thee hence, Satan. Get thee behind me. We ain't going to be able to tell him that because we ain't got enough of it in us to, to fight with him because we haven't kept our cup full. But in verse in chapter 10, after Jesus had gathered all his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. And you think about it. He has given us that same power. But he gathered them together and it would be an awesome, awesome experience to, to have been there and seen it on that magnitude, on that level. Uh, they just went out and they just started commanding stuff to be gone and it was gone. You know, we can do that today. But we got to get ourselves to where when we use that name, the devil knows exactly who we are. And he might know you and he might just laugh in your face. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, I see you trying to use Jesus' name, but you ain't where you need to be, so that ain't going to do you no good. I see a lot of people get themselves caught up in that situation. And it will decrease their faith sometimes. Because they try to do what the scripture says because of time after time and, and generations going on and things being taught that slowly becoming a doctrine or commandments of men becoming a doctrine in the church or a slack in one generation slowly causes the next generation to allow something else to go on for a long period of time that might have been preached a long time ago with sin and a couple of generations go by and now it's no longer sin or so they claim because they decided to overlook it well I see a situation in Lot's life where uh, he chose to overlook some things and it caused some major problems down the road because he chose to uh, go the easy route and it caused him major problems. And any time you see a story in the Bible where someone has suffered great losses because they decided to hang on to something and it cost them dearly in their earthly possessions yeah. and in their life yes. because they could have had so much more. And they had examples around them, all around them. They had examples showing that if you was to live for God and do like this, your life would be blessed. You will... God will be with you. But for some reason, they just continue to go for the easy route. And I've thought about it many times. It seems like it's so hard to, to understand why you would want to put yourself... Think about what Jesus put himself through. He chose to suffer all these things for us. He chose to. He didn't have to. No. But he chose to. To show you just how much he loved you. Yes. Yes. And I think, I was thinking earlier, some this week, how do we really show God how much we love him? How do we show How much do we really sacrifice to prove to him how much we love him? How much do we... It's too easy to just keep going through life and keep going through our everyday routine and and not mess up the flow of our our routine, getting up, going to work, enjoying ourselves, but setting aside an entire day just to spend with Jesus. Set aside an entire complete day and just spend. It's so refreshing. It's so refreshing. But yet we choose not to do it. <laughs> oh, Come on, Brother Jeremy. Oh, yes, Brother Jeremy. And we wonder why we put ourselves, or we wonder why we get ourselves in situations that we can't get out of. Come on, Brother Jeremy. Because we ain't spending that time that we need to be with him. Come on now. Oh, we spend a little bit of time with him. We talk to him throughout the day. But that separated time, that separate, just you and him. It's, it's so refreshing. Thanks. It's so building. And, and, and when you come out of that, 
you can try and see how some of this stuff works. You even got a little bit of boldness when somebody tells you that they haven't been feeling good or something. Like, well, we'll just pray for you right quick and boom, God heals them. And you're like, man, that kind of feels good. And yeah. You go and you do it for a little while and then you catch yourself getting back in an old routine. But God is desiring so much more for us. Come on, Brother Jerry. Bless my brother tonight. Bless my brother. Hallelujah. I want to be what he had me to be. In 10, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, he said he has not given us a spirit of fear, right. but of love and of power, power and of love and of a sound mind. He's given us that power. But we can abuse that power sometimes because we, uh, Brother Gunther was teaching about this morning, that struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Uh -huh. If we ain't walking in the spirit, we'll be trying to use that power for power for uh, fleshly things and trying to get back at people and yeah. trying to say we put a curse on somebody, wishing something on somebody that we don't need to wish something on them. Because I've seen instances where people have uh, have done that er ignorantly, wishing something on somebody, and it happened to them, and then they instantly felt bad because they realized yeah. they realized that God God did exactly what you asked Him to do, and if you misuse it, He has given that to you. He has given you that power. He said His gifts are not with He's not going to take it back from you. Right. But he wants you to learn how to use that. He wants you to learn how to use that to bless his kingdom and to work together. Thank you, Lord. I want to see this church grow. I want to see us grow together. I want to see people, when they come in here, they feel God's presence in yes, here. Sir, Brother that they feel, they know it's different. There's been people that's come. And they've, they've admitted it themselves like this. We haven't never felt nothing like this before. And then they're gone. <laughs> because they let some little thing get to them. Yeah. And I've watched how the devil has just wrecked their lives. Sometimes I wonder if it's us or if it's me or somebody else that didn't try hard enough to see them not get messed up or see them not not pray hard enough for them, not really have a burden hard enough for them. I know it's not, can't be all that because I know people that was praying for them and had a burden for them. But sometimes God God puts people in there at that time just to, just to help the church and then they're gone. I've seen people, they're just, they're just there for a season and they're not anymore. They, they got to taste it. They got to see that it's real. It's uh -huh. real. But we can't let the devil discourage us because God has given us that spirit, that boldness that Peter had when he stood up and told the leaders, I'm not going to stop preaching Jesus. That's right. I'm going to obey God. I can't disobey God because you might be able to destroy this flesh, but God is going to destroy this soul right. in hellfire if I don't obey him. And he has given me a command, and I have to do it. And regardless, God's going to take care of you. We might have to suffer a little bit. We ain't going to have to suffer. It even says in one spot, you have not yet suffered under blood. We haven't had to suffer. We haven't had to, we haven't had to go through nothing like he went through, or even like some of the apostles went through. They was beheaded, hung upside down. There's all kinds of stuff that was done to them. And even down through the years, there's been things that's happened to people that wouldn't denounce God. But so many people I've seen, like this story right here in, the, in Daniel, there was four out of the entire congregation that was kidnapped, that took him captive. Four people that stood up for God out of all those people in that tribe. Four people stood up for God and said, we're not going to do it. You think of the percentage that is. It's uh, very few. Very few. Right, bro. Right. And I hope that we don't have those same that same percentage when it comes down to us having to fight. Sister Nancy always says so many times, we can't run with the footmen. What are we going to do when the horsemen get here? Uh -huh. 
we got to learn. I want to see I want to see my nieces and nephews grow with this power and nurture and be used in it. I know there's probably a lot of people that preach a woman can't do nothing, but I've seen a lot more women do some praying and seeing things happen than I have sometimes in a lot of men. You women have power. You young ladies, young ladies have power. When you pray, when you're submitted like you need to be, y'all have power. I've seen it. I've seen it work. I've seen it work. And I want to see more. Because we have something right here that the world needs to see. Because if they start, if we start doing what we need to do, they'll start coming. They'll come in. We won't have to work hard. They'll hear as I heard a message one time, they'll see the they'll see the smoke from the fire that we have going on right here in this church. Hallelujah. But we just need to have that courage to stand no matter what's going on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, stories about men in the army uh, when, when they were faced with battle. It, it takes courage when you've got enemies shooting at you. It takes courage. I've never been in the service, never been, never been in that, but I, I, I've heard where there's some that, that they lost courage and they turned and run. We, we're, we're in a battle, and uh, we, 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 got, we, we need that courage, Brother Jeremy, amen, to stand and, and, and fight this fight that we're in, and, and, not, and not run, not turn and run, amen, but be strong, amen, in the power of the Lord, hallelujah, amen, yes, thank you, thank you, brother, hallelujah. Is there any needs tonight before we dismiss, is there any needs, let's, let's pray that the Lord will keep his hand upon uh, Brother and Sister Seymour and the, and the family as they vacation. The Lord will give them uh, safe travels and, and, and just good uh, a good time uh, of, of refreshment. So, and then on their trip, on their trip back home, pray the Lord will just give them safe, safe travels. Remember, Sister Sarah. Most of all, help her to put her trust in Him. Amen in God. Let's drink this. Uh, any other request? Sister Felicia? Let's remember little Sophia. She's doing better, but she still needs our prayers. Okay. Remember Brother Thomas, Sister Doris, little one. Lord, I'm thankful tonight for your, your goodness, Lord.